Okay, so let's have a look at some basic tools that you can use from the toolbar here. And there are a few different ways of representing this toolbar other than this in this vertical position. First and foremost, you can actually move it to wherever you want it to be. And you can have it uh, hidden as well in numerous ways, but I'll, I'll let you discover that. I guess I'll take these in order of what I think um, that you're most likely to do. So I, I think text is an extremely likely um, aspect of this for, for teachers. So um, what I've done there is I've hit the add text layer and I'm just going to simply write hello okay so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to, I'm going to highlight it I'm going to change its color I'm going to change its font to something that I like I like doses so I'm going to change that and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger okay in fact I'm going to make it really big let's make it huge okay like this okay so I've gone for here you've seen recently used you can go to all fonts and you can choose basically anything you want you've got some typeface options as well uh, there's all kinds of things you can do there you've got um, yeah un, uh, all, all kinds of stuff that, that you might want to you might want to do with it but I'm just going to hit hello now one of the things I'd encourage you to realize is that that the default position for that text is bang in the middle of your canvas so if like me you have a large canvas which is in my case positioned slightly to the right you're going to need to drag this up here okay so I'm dragging it up and here it is look okay so once I've got it into position perhaps it's my title I'm going to put it up there like that it's my title I'm going to put it like that now a couple of things that you can do here with this middle option you can make it smaller or you can make it much bigger okay if for some reason you wanted to rotate it you could do the same with that okay and yeah, and we'll position it there. Don't think it's beautifully done, but they, there you go. Now, you'll notice here in the layer editor, that's been set as a text layer, okay? So if we want it to become a normal a normal layer, non-text layer, we have to rasterize it. So this is now a normal layer. So I can turn it on, I can turn it off, and so on. Uh, if I was just to undo that rasterization, in fact, I think it was one more undo. Um, I've now got an unrasterized layer. I can always edit edit that text again. And here I can do whatever I want to with that. Okay. So that's that's in like that. And that, that's an that's a nice thing to do. Secondly, I want to talk to you about fill. Okay. Now I only ever use this fill on the on the furthest left hand side, solid fill. Perhaps you'll want a linear fill or a radial fill. You know, you may have uses for these things perhaps but what I tend to do is I tend to use a solid fill and for example let me let me change the whole canvas to blue all I have to do now is click I'll make the middle of that O a blue it's not going to work so I'm not on the right layer Ah, there we go so the, the whole of the background is now blue it took a little bit longer than I wanted it to but again I might want to change it to yellow uh, and put it on here I'm not totally sure why that is Circling, circling so much and taking so long but you get the idea and I'm just going to finish that off by making a, a black background as we had before okay so you've got various things that you you can do with that fill now one of the things that's worth noting is if, if I make a, a circle shape for example in white so there's my circle okay um, you might want to choose a fill of that circle I want to I want to fill it up with whatever uh, orange for some reason as long as that is now a solid line I can fill that specific area that way just bear in mind that if I was to make a circle with a white line very badly drawn circle and not to fill that up and not to close that circle and I was to try and fill it with orange that's not going to work because the, the fill is going to spill out of this circle because it's not sealed and as you'll see in a moment um, this entire area is going to become orange okay so you've got those options as well so there's lots of fills now a couple of other things that I would suggest to you are really worthwhile noting uh, I have here a ruler and the ruler is really cool for drawing very very straight lines okay and that's not going to that's not going to surprise you so what happens here I've got it at the position I want anything I draw now on the screen goes perfectly onto that line and if I draw another line I get a perfect diagram I get a perfectly parallel line to that so I don't know if you wanted to build up something like a table or if you wanted to uh, build up something with very straight features that would be that would be a nice way for you to do it now uh, this uh, this here this is this is a way for you to uh, make circular shapes however you might want them okay so uh, I just clicked on here 
you can click here, you can drag this around, uh, you can get exactly how you want it, and you can rotate it, you can do whatever you need to do, okay, and that, that shape is in place. Uh, a couple of other things I'd introduce you to, I'm kind of just going along the line now, I don't use this a great deal, but this is called a French curve. French curves are nice for making perfectly curved shapes. If I'm to draw, for example, on this little angle here, that's going to produce me that perfect curve in that way, okay? Or if I want to uh, draw this curve here, it makes a perfect shape that way for me. And you've got different shapes that you can use. So, again, some of you may or may not find uses for that. Um, I don't use this tool a great deal, the perspective guide, so I'll let you figure that one out. This one here, uh, this one here is an interesting one uh, because now if I set it here, for example, if I go to the middle of the page, so here now whatever happens, if I draw anything here on this side, it makes a perfect representation of it on the other side. So I don't know, I guess I could make a, a kind of a perfectly sort of um, uh, symmetrical shape in that way. I mean, mine's rather pathetic, but you get the idea. It is ultimately symmetrical, so you've got that option there as well. Um, I'll go straight over here onto the shapes, and we've already touched on this, uh, but you can make straight lines with the shape, you know, whatever straight lines you want. You can make squares, rectangles, any oblong shape you like, and as we've said before, you can make circles. Now, the thing I'd say with the circle is, where you start your cursor is always going to be the center of that circle, so you ultimately dragging it away and if you go back to the middle to where your cursor started so just be aware of that and you can make those shapes like that now to finish off with I just want to talk to you about this tool the quick transform and this tool which is the select tool let me start with the select here what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole object I'm going to control or command C to copy it and I'm going to control or command V to paste it and now I have two copies of that shape Okay, so it's a nice thing to do. So if you, if you draw something which you know you're really happy with, you draw, for example, a really nice smiley face, and you want your smiley face to be repeated for some reason, you can you can just select it in this way. Command C or Control C, and Command C or Control C, uh, Control V, and you've got a copy of it in that way. So if you're trying to reproduce things, it's kind of nice. And finally. Uh, this tool here, this transform, what you'll find with this one is depending on, let me just close this a second, let's assume you've got a, a I've selected this layer here which is the, I think it was the circle I had before, if I select this now I can now move that layer around, okay, so I can position it wherever I want that layer to be, okay, so if you've got something that's on a particular layer you can shift it around in this way, so uh, you know a good example would be, let me, let me actually let me actually put an image in here. What images do I have on file? Let me add an image that I've got in here, uh, just for this. Just so I've got this this cranium image might be a decent one. So here I've positioned it in that location. And what I can do now is I can edit in things from here. But if I just click this button here, I can now shuffle this about in whatever position. Put it up there. Maybe I say I'm happy with it, and then I think, okay, well actually no, I want to move it again. I want to make it a bit smaller. I put it up there and for some reason I want to rotate it, you know, I want it to be in that way. Perhaps my skeleton is having a, having a lie down, for example, I can put it up in that position and again I can move it around however I need to. Okay, so that's how that works.